This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Nineteen ninety one, Silence of the Lambs is released in theaters. It shocks audiences and delights critics, winning several Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Actress, and Best Actor for Anthony Hopkins' chilling portrayal as a new form of movie monster, Hannibal the Cannibal. Ten years later, a sequel is released, this time with the director of Alien attached. It hyped up audiences, excited horror fans, and afterwards got people asking, You okay, release God? You okay? So how can a sequel so bent for success turn out an unscrubbed hustling rube with no taste? Perhaps you can help us solve an unsolved enigma. I'm Nostalgia Stack, and welcome to Nostalgia Ween. So much for allowing me into your asylum, Benny. Well, I only hold on to the crazies. I think it'd still be safe. Is he faring any better? He's a complicated man, lost in his own world. But he carries a lot of insight. Perhaps a familiar face can help bring him back to us. You are his taste, so to speak. <laughs> oh, well, I'll see what I can do. Mm. Through that door, the very last cell. Stay to the right. Oh, it's a good thing you said that, because I was going to hug the wall with all the crazy people on it. You have no idea how many people make that mistake. Get it. This should have been a hit. I can smell your chart. Fine, fine, it's fine. Everything's fine. We got everything under control. Everything's fine. <laughs> and guess what? We just changed the algorithm again. Good luck trying to figure that one out. <laughs> If you knew. You were wondering if I knew why Silence of the Lands was such a masterpiece and its sequel Hannibal such a turd. Okay, I guess we can talk about that. They lock me in here because of my views, you know. Seen as too unconventional. Too dangerous. Well, you did make fun of the Aladdin remake. What? Naomi Scott is a treasure! An okay singer, though. Oh, oh my god! god. How did you say that? She's a treasure! She was, she was our perfect. Perfect. For the whole perfect! We're getting off subject, let's talk about Hannibal! grossing of the Thomas Harris movie series, Hannibal had a lot of hype when it first came out. It was everywhere. People were psyched to see their favorite elegant cannibal return to the big screen. The reactions afterwards, though, were less than stellar, with critics not giving it the best reviews and a lot of people acknowledging something just felt off about it. But it was hard to point out what it was. It seemed to have the same chills, the same gore, the same weirdness that drew so many people to its predecessor. So why was this strangeness not as well accepted as the previous strangeness? Yeah, I never really figured that out either. And you want to see if I can help you solve the mystery? If it gives you something to do. You see, Ridley Scott is trying to test me, so I ate his script for Gladiator 2. That's gonna be a thing? Totally is, look it up. With some fava beans. And whatever wine he recommended in that movie The Goodyear that nobody saw, and I didn't see either, because you know it's The Goodyear. Who the hell saw The Goodyear? It's your time, man. There's a lot of movie to cover. Good point. This is Hannibal. The credits play as we see Nurse Barney from the first film talking with a dying Spock. Oh, I mean one of Lecter's victims named Mason. Played by Gary Oldman. Or was it the Eraserhead baby grown up? So, Clary Starling and Hannibal Lecter became... friendly. I guess we're supposed to fear slash feel sorry for him, but his voice is so goofy he keeps coming across as a Jim Carrey character. When the fox hears the rabbit scream, he comes a-running. Five o'clock, solve world hunger. 
tell no one. Well, I could listen to most conspicuous features. I'll swing by for a minute. Allow them to envy me. Let's say it with a respect it deserves. It's not a dress, it's a kilt! We cut to a pigeon magic eye, which doesn't serve the plot at all, but this is when Ridley Scott stopped being an artist and turned into an artiste. We see Clarice Starling, played this time by Julianne Moore, because Jodie Foster basically said this movie was stupid. Fair, but you did direct this. Who's getting ready to take on a drug raid. Excuse me, I'm Officer Bolton. I'm in charge here. I'm here because I know of Elder Drumgo. I'm here for the drugs and the weapons. You're here because our mayor wants to appear tough on drugs. Now I'm here to give you that scene where the spunky new cop takes control from the stubborn old cop. I expect this to go smoothly. You got a smart mouth, lady. He's upset? Name me one other movie where that happened. Wow, we are behind on this. Clary sees one of the criminals is holding a baby and she orders them to back down. But Officer Stubby Pants goes ahead anyway and there's a big shootout. The lady with the baby shoots Clarice with an Uzi, but she manages to take her down without hitting the kid. Damn, even after being shot, she still nailed her. Holy smoke, she should get a medal, man. The woman had a baby in her arms. Is that how you define good judgment? And I regret it. I resent myself for it. To quote Fargo. Huh? Yeah, her name is disgraced all over the papers. Even on the front page, it says she shot a woman holding a baby. And an Uzi. With bullets flying out of them. Half of them in you. Am I missing something? I mean, I know it's not protocol and it's technically wrong, but from a writing standpoint, wouldn't it make sense to disgrace Clarice over a bigger mistake? Like, maybe the lady was unarmed or Clarice said go ahead with the raid instead of the other guy. Something everyone would be like, holy smokes, I can't believe she did that. Here, she fires in self-defense with bullets already hitting her and she nails the shooter saving the baby. Honestly, I feel like if most people heard Baby Save from Crime Lord Unharmed, this wouldn't be a front page smear piece. Unless I'm missing something, which I totally could be, I feel like most people would be like, Holy shit, Clarice is Robocop! No, I mean, this is traumatizing in this totally realistic movie where the action scenes aren't cliched and there's fruit carts and people eat other people's- Yeah, we'll get to that. Remember Mason Virgin? Lecter's fourth victim, the only one that survived. She's demoted to dropping by Larry King's house as he says he has new information about finding Lecter. You know, I thank God for what happened. It was my salvation. I always wanted to look like the Crypt Keeper microwaved into a gelfling. No, we met conventionally. We discover that Lecter got Mason drugged off his ass and convinced him to cut off his own face and feed it to the dogs. Pfft, that old trick. Isn't it funny how you can look at my face? But you shied when I said the name of God. Now let's never bring this up in the movie again. What faith even are you? Eh, who cares? Clarice looks over old footage of Lecter attacking a nurse. It's actually one of the few chilling moments in the movie. That is, until this silliness. Yeah, that's a lion sound effect you heard there. You see, we can't put together that he's a predator, so that helps us dumb moviegoers put the pieces together. Put him in the MGM logo to make it even more obvious. <laughs> Clarice interviews Barney, who feels he might still have the session tapes that were recorded of her and Hannibal talking, possibly helping her figure out where he is. These are valuable. By the way, I hear you got a soft spot for lambs. Oh no, they're gonna kill the lambs! Oh, boo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Pansy. She looks over the pictures from the first film, because what psycho photographer would snap shots like these? As we see Hannibal, played by Anthony Hopkins, is in Florence trying to get a job at an art museum. Oh yeah, you can totally smoke around the ancient relics! We Italians care so little about preserving art! So, are the signores personal effects of Stila to the palazzo? Mm -hmm. This is Inspector Pazzi, played by Giancarlo Giannini, who's inspecting the disappearance of his predecessor. Now in the book, Lecter got plastic surgery so no one would recognize him. Thankfully in the movie, Florence is just full of idiots. You were on the Amasa case, I'm sure I read. Yes, that's right. This is much less grand a case, I would think. So while the big draw in this movie is obviously supposed to be Hannibal and Clarice, honestly, these two kinda had better chemistry. Lecter's ability to push his buttons while playing naive works wonderfully with the inspector's shaky nerves and grouchy demeanor. Both try to play each other and always give the impression they know far less than they really do. Your ancestor was hanged, writhing and kicking alongside the Archbishop. Were you unfairly dismissed from the grander case, or did you deserve it? Is that the inventory? Yes. May I see it? Of course. 
I know it's gonna sound strange, but if you replace Clarice's drama and Egg Drop Soup Muppets subplot with only these two, the movie probably would have been more interesting. But he still has the hots for Clarice as he sends her a letter saying he misses the good old days. Dear Clarice. What's up? I have followed with enthusiasm the course of your disgrace and public shaming. My own never bothered me. She's also so wrapped up in his words, she's missing that her lab is on fire. Pinky, I told you not to light the gerbil sacrifice yet. No! Sorry, Bray! She notices the letter has a certain fragrance, so she takes it to an expert to see if it can be narrowed down. Yep, he definitely farted on it. You'd almost certainly find it somewhere in Paris, Rome, Amsterdam. I'm sorry, I can't understand you unless you use a bell. The inspector does some research and finds Lecter on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. Well, we know this was shot before September. He also discovers there's a massive reward from Humpty Dumpty to bring him in alive. Meanwhile, Ray Liotta plays a pervy assistant DA who's interested in getting Lecter and looking at post covered boobies. <laughs> if you work with me, then your so-called career here might improve. All I have to do is draw a line through your name rather than under it. You'll get out of this fine. I don't know, why does this feel... Forced. I mean, the first movie had hints that being a woman in the FBI was rough, but this feels... Like it's bashing you over the head with it? In the original, it was subtle. You could watch it and almost not even notice it. There's a sense that people don't take her seriously, but it's never flat out said. Here, it's flat out said, because everything is so over the top. I told you to go home to your wife. That was wrong. This town is full of corn pone country pussy. That's what made the original more scary. Even though it discussed weird things, it did so in a realistic way. A way that showed you the ugliness of the world rather than advertise it. It's the difference between a friend telling you about a good car and a salesman telling you about a good car. You feel the manipulation and it's hugely distracting. But quid pro quo, Hypa, quid pro quo. Okay, what do you want? What do you think I want? I don't know. Why don't you know? You're not gonna tell me? Would you like it if I told you? You don't know what quid pro quo means, do you? Of course I do! A British sport. Oh, great. I just want to look smart! The inspector finds out he can get an advance on Lecter's reward if he supplies a fingerprint. So he drops by Lecter's home. Dr. Fell. Dr. Fell. I'm in one of these suitcases. Figure out which one. I enjoy taking random pictures for no reason. In 15 years, that's going to be a big thing. You are a patsy of the patsy family, I think. Oh, I'm going to ride that symbolic horse to the races. He says his heater is broken, so he puts on some gloves. While leaving his bare feet completely out. People don't always tell you what they're thinking. They just see to what you don't. Advance in life. Again, something about this doesn't feel right. A scene like this in the first one was so creepy, but here, it's just not. Well, that's because the first one knew how to shoot Lecter. This guy was in his mid-fifties. Not exactly the scariest of threats, but the film knew to keep the lighting from above, rarely have him next to anyone else so you can't get an idea of how big he is, and always have him in dark, confining environments so you're always aware you're dealing with a psychopath. Here you can see he's a pudgy little old man in his 60s, because he's shot like everyone else. Once in a while you'll get a creepy shot, but it's often ruined by a little thing like, oh, I don't know, having him in his PJs barefoot? Oh, and saying lines like this doesn't help. Okie dokie. Da! The horrifying call of the cartoon plumber! Okie dokie. The inspector hires a thief to track down Lecter to get a thumbprint on a bracelet. My name is Ridley Scott and I will have my cameo in this film or my next. Sorry, my coat is very loud when pretentious directors are filming it. <laughs> to quote sideways... Are you chewing gum? Yeah, another word of advice. Hannibal's not very scary when he looks like a cow munching grass. Mm, so I said, fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's a lot creepier when I don't have bubble issues. Lecter stabs the guy, and he's weirdly almost happy about it. Tried to hit me in the balls, but he missed. It's funny if you think about it. I mean, I'm not thinking about it. I'm dying in agonizing pain, but you can think about it. <laughs> Let me help you. No, don't. 
You're a weird guy and I hope to forget you quickly. You know, things weren't goofy enough. This shit up, but what the hell? More scenes need to end with a goblin shitting. The inspector sees Hannibal at the opera and introduces him to his wife. This is Dr. Fell. Come on. That's weird, he bit my hand. Meanwhile, Clarice continues her search for Hannibal because there's not enough of her just staring at shit in her office when she finally sees him on a security camera. Stupid frame right away! She calls Patsy's department where she got the footage. FBI, I'm not here. Patsy. I'm not here. You're trying to catch him yourself, aren't you? He killed three policemen. He will kill you too. He'll be fine. You know, the style is less American Silence of the Lands and more Italian The Crow. Which wouldn't be too bad if it had more interesting stuff to say. Because of his betrayal of the Emperor's trust, he died by hanging. It includes the death by hanging of Judas. Make Pierre de Lavinia now in hell. Avarice, hanging, self-destruction. Make my own home be my gallows. Yeah, the metaphors in this movie is, for lack of a better word, stupid. In the original, the lands reflected Clarice's need for purpose, to save what's already been destined to be slaughtered. Here, schmuck who's obviously gonna die is gonna die! Inferno Pierre de Lavinia's body hangs from a bleeding tree. Observe this piece called the Blainton Symbolism. Notice the Blainton Symbolism. Speak in strained hisses and coughing sibilance as though he is hanging still. I'm talking about you, Potsy. You are gonna die. I'm giving very serious thought to eating your wife. You know, nobody does flower or candies anymore. <laughs> he ties him up and invites him to hang around, so to speak. Okie dokie, here we go. Sorry, tried to turn that into a thing. I really think it's gonna be the next Jar Jar How Wooed. But Clarice calls the inspector and Hannibal answers. Is this Clarice? Oh, well, hello, Clarice. Do you know how many people are gonna think this line is from the first film? Is he dead? Unfortunately, you've caught me at an awkward moment. Making the movie Hannibal. He hangs up and drags the inspector to the window. Not sure how nobody notices that! Yeah, the European, why risk a faux pas? And he cuts him up and throwing him over the balcony. <laughs> Next, on our point at Horrific Things and Laugh Tour, D-Day. <laughs> Emotionally crippled children. Goldfinch's box office. Wait, 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 I'm confused. This is the middle of the movie, and there's been very little interaction between Hannibal and Clarice. And the guy he's had the most interaction with is dead! Maybe it's like Heat, where even though they barely talk to each other, there's a connection through how much they watch one another. Except he doesn't watch her. He barely even mentions her the more I think about it. He sent one letter, and that's it. I can see why him and the inspector had more chemistry, because they're in a situation where they can have chemistry. Ah, oh, but now we get to movie number two. Number two? Yes, the second half has nothing to do with Florence. The inspector is never brought up again. Honestly, you could cut almost everything from Italy and it wouldn't impact the story at all. Then why did we watch it? Because art, fancy clothes, poetic performers, farting demons, this is the new deep Ridley Scott we've all had to get accustomed to. My God, did we really think that this guy was gonna bring dignity back to Alien? Well, he did so well with Robin Hood. Wow! Stamps! This takes me back. Wow! Stamps! This takes me back. There was a time when those stamps were used for everything! Okay, you were not there in the previous shot. But then came the stamps.com! Really? Tell me more, Grandpa Me! You see, nobody had time to go to the post office. They were busy. Who's got time for all that traffic parking? Looking around all that mail and packages. It was a hassle. That's why we needed the stamps at Datacom. One of the most popular time-saving tools for small businesses. Stamps.com eliminates trips to the post office and saves you money with discounts that you can't even get at the post office. Smokes that is holy. I did not know that. Be quiet, whippersnapper. I'm old. Whether you're a small office sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or even a warehouse sending out thousands of packages a day, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease, I tell ya. This is the most amazing thing ever heard by ears. I got my 
then you will be quiet. Why do you always have your hands like that, by the way? It's a new dance I'm trying to get going called the... To use it is easy, young me. Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail is ready, just hand it to a mail carrier or drop it in the nearest mailbox. It's that simple. No wonder these physical stamps are becoming such a relic. You will be quiet, Bubble Bottom. I moved. With stamps.com, you get five cents off every first class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. Not to mention it's a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving you time and money. No wonder over 700,000 small businesses use stamps.com. This I did not know. Quiet, you people. <laughs> I think you're running out of old guy things to say. Quiet, you horse whisperer. It's a movie. Polly Wally. It's a song. Pockety Pockety. Disney gibberish. Bubblicious. You need to stop. I'm old. Right now, my viewers get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Wow. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in nostalgia. Stamps.com, enter nostalgia to get your four week trial, free postage, and digital scale. Have I forgotten anything? What are you doing in my house and why is there two of me? I'm old! Wow! Stamps.com. Go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in nostalgia to claim your special offer today! <laughs> So we see Mason wearing Hannibal's mask. Your king guessing is as good as mine. As he plans to continue Clarice's downward career by framing her, making it look like she kept a letter from Hannibal, supposedly sent to her. I don't understand why she didn't turn this over. Lecter didn't write or he didn't write it because I did. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we weren't all cartoons? <laughs> She's put on administrative leave as Hannibal breaks into the assistant DA's home. Hello, dog. I was giving very serious thought to eating your wife. Let me just leave my prints everywhere here. Let me go steal some stuff where I'll also leave my prints everywhere. Let me go right to an FBI agent's home where I'll also leave- Oh, you know the drill by now. I used to be a criminal mastermind! Look at this. He's right in her home. This should be terrifying. But you don't even see his face, and she's asleep. So what creep factor or insight are we supposed to get out of this? Even when they do finally talk, he just sends her on this scavenger hunt. I like to watch you as we speak, with your eyes open. It pleases me. You have very shapely feet. Hot. They're weak and unruly and believe in nothing. Dr. Lecter? Dr. Lecter? It keeps constantly cutting as if the suspense should be where Lecter is. But it shows where he is and what he looks like. An old man from the 90s who said, I want to look cool this morning, and then stopped halfway because he was too tired. You're not even listening back close because the camera's always moving and always cutting away. As if the style and movement is masking that there's very little substance or intrigue here. In the original, it was just their faces, nowhere to hide. No artsy images to put them against to distract you. It was just two interesting people exposing their deepest vulnerabilities. When you think Hannibal Lecter, criminal mastermind, stalking Clary Starling, do you really think dumpy guy in a t-shirt and baseball hat gifting her shoes? That's not a mastermind, that's internet fanboying 101. But Mason's men find Lecter and knock him out, as Clarice notices. Oh, you're lucky you weren't holding a baby. He's brought to Mason, who has plans for the captured Cape Crusader. I mean, captured Lecter. I guess you wish now you, you fed the rest of me to the dogs. I'm sorry, who are you? And what horrifying fate does Mason have planned for Lecter? A death trap involving giant killer pigs. Because to be fair, sharks with friggin' laser beams on their heads just weren't in season. How will Hannibal get out of this one? Will he be able to survive the silence of the hams, or will he become the other white meat? Tune in next week. Same lamb time, same lamb channel. Clarice bursts in to save him while Mason's henchmen try to stop her. Better hurry. Things might 
might go faster if you hand me the knife. Yeah, give the cannibal serial killer the knife. That can't backfire. She gets shot, but Hannibal escapes and convinces Mason's assistant Cordell to toss him in. Because he bossed him around in two brief scenes. You probably don't even remember seeing them. I'm sure the mime symbolically represented his pain and you just weren't artsy enough to see it. Hey, Cordell, why didn't you push him in? You can always say it was me. Yeah, that's legit funny. Mason is troughed off while Lecter carries Clarice to the assistant DA's lake house where the assistant DA shows up. That's lucky. Good, you brought the wine. Well, I was gonna bring my select honey, but... <laughs> Clarice wakes up in an evening gown, which I'm not sure what's funnier to imagine, Hannibal buying that dress or getting it on her while she's passed out. Come on, fit into that! Uh, size 6 my ass! Uh, uh. As he notices, she's using the phone to call the police, and he checks his watch. Yes, I have time to win her over in 10 minutes. Or whatever nonsensical bullshit I have planned for tonight. Clarice is super drugged and sees the assistant DA is drugged too, leading to a super gory, super bloody, super over the top scene. Nope, you can't show that on YouTube unless you want to be demonetized. <laughs> oh, come on! Nope, anything too adult is unsuitable for all advertisers. By the way, that reminds me, we're starting a new rule. Anything made for kids will no longer have ads. Wait, so to make money, you have to create kid-friendly videos that aren't for kids at all. You're welcome! Well, great, how do we get across what happens? It's like the most famous scene in the movie! I have an idea. Mmm, <gasps> brain food! You want some more, Assistant DA? You know what they say, you are what you eat. Is that too silly? Honestly, not silly enough, but it's all we can get away with for now. It's a pretty silly scene, but I give credit, it does stand out in an otherwise pretty dull flick. Afterwards, Clarice tries to attack Lecter in the kitchen, but he restrains her via fridge ponytail... cuff? As he offers himself to her, but she refuses. Would you ever say to me, stop? If you loved me, you'd stop. Not in a thousand years. I guess I should be interested, but honestly I'm just wondering if the Vegetarian Times book was intentional or not. It would be the first time in this movie I couldn't tell if a scene was meant to get a laugh. She handcuffs herself to Lecter, and he threatens to cut off the fat, so to speak. Above or below the wrist. I just got done shooting Titus, where I both cook people and lose a hand. I'm gonna have the weirdest tight casting! This is really gonna hurt. So Hannibal cuts off his own hand to escape, but they don't show it that way. They try to do this fake out like he cut her hand off and she screams. But afterwards, when you find out, that of course begs the question, why the hell did she scream then? I'm just recreating a man who says he feels the same pain as his pregnant wife. Looks pretty stupid, huh? Oh, you have morning sickness? You have balls! So the police arrive and notify all the airports to keep a lookout for a world-famous cannibal with one hand or he gets on a plane with no problem. Again, before September. What's that? Can I have some? You're a very unusual boy, aren't you? Well, I did get in trouble for sauteing my little sister. He feeds him a bit of Ray Liotta's brain. Oh, that must be why he did the identical. And the movie ends on that weak-ass note. Now, it should be pointed out that in the book, Hannibal tries to drug and brainwash Clarice. Whether or not it really worked, who knows. But three years later, they're going on dinner dates to the opera in South America. This is also a really stupid ending, but like the brain scene, you do at least remember it. The ending was changed because Jodie Foster said she didn't like it and wouldn't shoot the film if it was kept that way. So the ending was changed, but Foster still ended up not doing it and instead filmed this record-breaking blockbuster. Yes, there is a good reason you haven't heard of it. I bring this up because everything that happens to Clarice in the movie is building up to this original ending. Her being disgraced, losing all credibility, no longer being able to help or save people. It was amounting to her having nothing worth fighting for, and thus putting up little fight against Lecter. But since that ending didn't happen, most of those scenes are pointless now. Just like a lot of the Florence scenes, the Mason scenes, Porky's Revenge, nothing new is learned, changed, or evolved about these characters. And bizarrely, when nothing of interest is presented, it doesn't present a very interesting movie. A lot of suspenseful and intriguing stories have emerged from the Thomas Harris book series. Manhunter, Red Dragon, The Show Hannibal. So it's clear a lot can be done with these characters. Here though, it's a pointless, unfocused, unnecessary cash-in that doesn't know if it wants to be funny or serious and fails at both. 
Where the original leaves chills and nightmares in people's minds due to its patience and discipline, this one is mostly forgettable due to its surprisingly going over the top without giving us any grounded reality to care about. With the exception of the brain-eating scene and a few moments in Florence, it's a surprisingly boring mess. There's still much that can be explored with these characters, but it's a journey that's not going to be taken here. So, Hyper, now you know how a sequel that can have so much built up can deliver so little. Are you satisfied with the answers you've been seeking? Not really. Because the truth is far more disturbing than you thought. No, because that's not why I'm here. I just came to pick up my husband. Ah! Oh, oh! That Benny got me good! Angel Temple! Mm, hey, Blood Spike! Think those tranquilizer darts are finally wearing off! Well, it looks like you're awake enough to go. Yeah, you win this round, but next time you're gonna wake up in my torture chamber! <laughs> Wait, so I'm not locked in here because of my dangerous mind? No, I locked you up in here because that David S. Pumpkin shit is old. Yeah, seriously, that was even lame when it was popular. I was wearing this before him! Yeah, whatever. Come on, Bonefist, let's go home. Wait, how'd you get out of your cell? There's no glass there, critic. Check it out. Oh, I see. You're using a deceptive mind game to make me perceive what wasn't there. No, you're just a dumbass. Yeah, pretty much. Well, how do you keep everyone else in their cells? Wait, there's no class? I gotta get back to work! It's all good, dog. We good. It's all good. We good. Well, maybe there's something to be said about combining extremes with subtlety. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and hopefully next week we'll review something not quite so in your face. Me, 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 for Pause for Ability enriches the lives of children with disabilities by training and placing quality, task-trained service dogs. This provides increased independence for the children and assistance to their families. For Pause also works with veterans from recent conflicts who have lost the use of their limbs or their hearing while in active combat. In all cases, the results speak for themselves. Their founder, Karen Shirk, is alive today because of a service dog. Karen was home with open heart surgery when a deadly mix of meds left her barely conscious and fighting for life. The phone rang and rang and her dog finally picked it up and placed it beside her and began barking. It was her dad on the line and he rushed over to get her the help she needed. This is just one of so many stories that these animals have created. These animals are amazing and the people who train them are amazing too, and you can help them in their goal. Please help this astonishing nonprofit agency continue to build its meaningful work. Your support will be a life changing act for a child, a soldier, a family, and for you. Click on the link and be a part of something very special. <laughs>